let's talk about Real Talk Kim, because yes. she is coming as well. She is, she is a phenomenal speaker. She's had a lot of tragedies in her life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think she was uh, abused and uh, was divorced. She just has a lot of history and healing that I believe will be very, very strategic for the women here uh, in Lima, Ohio, and those who will come. Her real talk is her passion about how God brought her through and how he has positioned her now to help mm -hmm. other women heal. So, I, love, I love the fact that she is completely willing to be herself. Yes, um, yes. She, you know, who God has called her to be, she's not gonna waver from that. She's not, and she's different. I mean, her style is different, yeah. her approach is different. Uh, she can sing, she can preach, she ministers. I think the combination of gifts that's in her is gonna be a blessing to the women here to help them just be, embrace yourself. Be, be okay with who God created mm. you to be and be happy with it. That's right. Well, here's your opportunity to hear, see Real Talk Kim as well. Here's a short segment from Pastor Kim Pothier, Real Talk Kim. Let me remind you of Paul and Silas in the midnight hour, beaten black and blue, thrust into the inner prison, chains chained hands and feet. The Bible says they prayed and sang praises to God and God shook the prison off its foundation and the doors off their hinges and every prisoner bands were loosened. What? Come on, Judah, praise. There's power in your praise. God said last night, prophesy a new chapter. He said to tell you this is your season of restitution, restoration. He said this is your season for a new anointing. And this anointing is going to destroy the yokes in your life. And this anointing is going to unlock a new chapter and a new season of restitution and restoration. He said this new level of anointing is not coming on everyone. He's a good, good father. But he ain't going to force you to do nothing. He's a good, good father. Then you're going to be mad, huh? Because a lot of you mad because God ain't done what you thought he would do, but you didn't prepare for it. And then you're mad at God. The greatest thing that I know about God, it took me to 36 years and many, many storms I created on my own to finally put my hands out wide and say, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Every dream. Every dead dream that had fallen on the wayside. God, I surrender. I'm not even going to go try to fix it. I'm not even going to try to stabilize what you're trying to shake me free from. I'm going to stop knocking on the door that's closed, God, and trust that whatever's behind it's not for me. And you say, but the Bible says to knock and the door will be open, but you want his will to be open. If you've been knocking for 15 years and that door ain't open, that ain't your door. Because he's not a mean, mean father. You've been knocking on that same door for a year. You mad at God because that door ain't open. It ain't your door. Your door is exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask. You're paralyzed on a door that's too small for you. He said this new level of anointing is not coming to everyone. It's not coming on the murmurs and the complainers. It's not coming on the moaners and the groaners. It's not coming on the critical and the judgmental. It's not coming on the religious and self-righteous. It's not coming on the condescending. It's not coming on the hypocritical. It's not coming to the lazy and indifferent. But this new anointing for our next chapter and the new chapter is coming on the hungry and thirsty. It's coming on those who love God and hate sin. It's coming on the passionate. It's coming on the praiders. Praisers. But this new anointing is right there. Right there. But see, the enemy's got your tongue. With disappointment, despair. You can't even utter the name Jesus. You lay in your bed like your body weighs a million pounds because of disappointment. Because of expectation that didn't happen. 
And now you ain't got no expectation or faith at all because the things that you thought he should have done and he didn't do, now you don't believe in him at all. You're like, I don't even really know if there is a God. You've even been looking at astrology, trying to figure out who God is, but you ain't opened your mouth one time to begin to say, Jesus, I need to hear you right now, God. I'm not leaving this room until you talk to me. I want this stuff off of me. I want this generational curses or depression off of me. I want this just the, the, the anger and the bitterness that I have towards that ex that walked out of. I want it gone, God. I want these shackles off of me so I can move forward because I know that I cannot be used greater than the place that I forgive at. Just like Judah brought Joseph up out of the pit, praise is going to take you into your next chapter. Praise is the inter- introduction of your new chapter. God says, if you'll praise him, he will start a new chapter in your life today. He said, if you'll praise him like you already are there and praise him on credit, he will turn things around for you. If you'll give him a palace praise from the pit, he'll take you to the palace. There's a prophecy hidden in your praise. That's why I wouldn't want to go to no secret friendly church. Uh -uh. I want a church where honey in that place where a whole bunch of other believers are there that got faith that I can hijack their faith all day long. And before I know it, that hijacked faith is downloading on the inside of me. And I got a praise that is shaking the mountains loose. Look at your neighbor again. There's a prophecy hidden in my praise. Come on, tell them. Your praise is dressing you for what God is going to do next. When Pharaoh called for Joseph, he was still in the prison, but he changed his clothes and he shaved himself and he got himself ready for the next level. Your praise is dressing for your next level, for your new chapter. You don't feel like getting up. You don't feel like fixing your hair. You don't feel good at all because something happens when you lose everything and you're scared to death. See, the Bible said it's a mustard seed of faith. That is the smallest seed there is. But so often, we don't even know how to use a mustard seed of faith because the enemy is allowing our mountains to be so big in our, in our, in our eye gates that we can't even see the unthinkable, the unfathomable, the impossible because my God is a God of possible. My God is a God of thinkable. My God is a God of destroyal. My God is a God of restoration. My God is a God of redemption. But see, that mountain in our way is so big, we can't even see. We're still stuck over here, the things that are left. Can I tell you that your future is never tied to anybody that got up and walked out on you? Your destiny is not tied to anybody that didn't see a gift on the inside of you. Church hurt will keep you bound. Because they didn't see the call of God in your life. Maybe you needed to be here so that the gifts of in, on the inside of you could have been used. Over there, there was too many people already being used. But yet you're stuck and hurt. Because what you thought should have happened didn't happen. More from Real Talk, Kim, in person here in Lima, July 14th and 15th at the Embracing God's Glory Women's Conference at In Faith Ministries. You can register online. You can call them. Um, Don't delay. It's always good to do it early so they know who's coming and then be praying for others who should be coming as well.